Hello, my name is Matt Max. Welcome back. So, in the last episode, I talked about how to build a circuit that can add or subtract, and where a machine can choose whether or not you want to add and subtract. Now, it took me about a week to actually build this because this is actually partially wrong. First of all, first of all, you can actually I completely forgot about this end gate. Forget about this end gate. Instead, you can go from the switch directly into into the carry-in because the switch is plus 5 volt anyway. So this end gate you can completely forget about. The more problematic part though is this right here. So I have this end gate and I have this inverter now. Here's a problem. The problem is that if this end gate is 0, the inverter will always be 1, even if this is 0. But they both feed into the same line. So you would have a 1 here and a 0 here, and then it wouldn't work. What you have to do is you have to swap those two around for it to actually work. So that's the first problem that I had. Uh, the other thing that I didn't know before is that the output of an end gate can actually not only put out, it can also sync current. So if you have an end gate, or if you have any logic gate, I don't know if this is true with all ICs, but it's true for the ones I use. If you have a gate like this, you would think, okay, I have the output, so current is flowing to this direction, but it can also flow into this direction. This is called sinking current. Okay, and the problem is, if you go ahead and if you build the circuit where you have where you have your inverter here, and you have one end gate, and then you have another end gate, and you do this, right? Which is basically this. So you would have B here. Like this. And then you would have your switch here. The problem is that those two outputs are now connected. Right, so if this output is 0, but this output is 1, right, if this output is 1, but this is 0, the current flows like this. It flows into the output of this end gate right here, and then the current or the voltage actually coming out is no longer high enough to actually trigger, trigger the uh, other logic gates that you put onto it. So I had to make some changes for it to actually work, and what I used is called a diode. Now, you all have seen diodes in your life. This right here is a light-emitting diode, an LED. Now, what a diode does, it looks like this. It's, it's blocking current, okay? If you have a diode like this, current can only flow like this, but it cannot flow like this, that doesn't work. If you have a diode like this, current can only flow into one direction, which is the reason why an LED has a long and a short lag. Current can only flow from the long to the short lag, not the other way around. Alright, so you can actually buy diodes that are not LEDs, but I only have LEDs, I don't have other diodes, so I use LEDs for now. I'm going to have to, going to, have to buy actual diodes for the finished computer. So, if we actually write this complete circuit down with everything we need, with pull-down resistors and stuff, it looks uh, like this. So you would have your adder like this. Carry in, carry out, result A and B. Then you would have B right here, like this. Oops, it's supposed to be an end gate. This, then you would have a diode. That would connect to B. And you would have your switch over here. Going here and going through an inverter into this. So be plus 5 volts. Of course, there's a pull down resistor right here. Okay, you would need another pull down resistor over here. 
And then you would have A with another pull down resistor. And then you would connect this directly to the carry in. It already has a pull down resistor. And that is our addition and subtraction. So whenever we close the switch, we have a subtraction, otherwise we have an addition. Because when we close this switch, this is true, this is false. So the inverted B comes true. At the same time, carry in is 1, which is equal to plus 1, as I talked about last time. So this will be subtraction and addition in 1. So here is how it actually looks. Alright, so this is it. <laughs> I just got it working, and I'm a little bit proud, although it's, I, I realize it's not so complicated. For me, it's cool that I managed to build it, so... This is just what I just drew on here, okay? This is this. Actually, let me get both into the picture. Okay. All right, like this. Cool, so what do we see here? We have our adder, that is this ship right here. This ship right here is a four bit adder, okay? This is a four bit adder. Now, then we have our inverter and those are end gates. So what do we have here? We have, we have A, those are the lower four bits. Those four white cables, that's A, right? Then we have those four black cables right here, that's B. The white cables A go into the 4-bit adder directly, okay? They go into the 4-bit adder directly, as you see right here. Although they obviously have pulled on resistors, those are those. The black cables B go through this inverter, into one end gate, that's the lower root, or directly into an end gate, that's the upper root, and then both signals go to through those LEDs, which are the diodes right here. And they all have pulled on resistors that are directly at the adder, those are those resistors right here. Okay? That is all you see here, and it took me an uh, incredible time to build. So let's actually look at it. Let's see if it actually works. So, I had very weird problems with this one. So let's first see, um, so one. Okay, I, at first I'm just testing all the inputs. So one is one, two is two, four is four, eight is eight. Now we're testing B. One is, one is one, two is two, four is four, and eight is eight. Okay, that's working. Now let's try, oops, let's try out addition. I'm just going to show you that both things actually work. Let's say 2 plus, plus 1, and that's 3, 2 plus 2 is 4, and so on. Okay, yeah, that's actually working now. Let's, if you press this button right here, that is going to be subtraction. So let's say 1 minus 1. I hope this is actually working. It should. So 1 minus 1 is 0. And right here, you actually see, what you see here is B inverted. Okay? So, yeah, that's 0, that's right. 1 minus 2 is minus 1, that's correct. 2 minus 2 is 0, that's correct. 4 minus 2 is 2, that's correct. So you see, this is actually working. Isn't that cool? We have addition and we have subtraction in one circuit and we can choose. Now, that might not look like much, but this is one of the major components of your computer. And this is actually the first component that will go into, into our 8-bit computer as it is. This is one of the components that is going into our 8-bit computer. This is called an ALU. An ALU an arithmetic logic unit. That is the part of your computer that does all the calculations, okay? When your, when your computer program somewhere says A plus B and A plus B are variables, what's happening 
in your actual computer is that somewhere in what is called an instruction register, right, this is saved. A plus B. Okay. And also it's saved where exactly to find A and B in the memory. And then the memory the memory gives A into what is called an accumulator, which is connected to the ALLU. And then the memory is putting B into another storage. And then something called a control matrix, I think, says, okay, addition, right? And then the LAU does it, adds the two numbers and gives it out. So that's basically what your computer does. Now, normally an LAU has more than just addition and subtraction, and it's way more complicated than this. It also has logic functions normally, which is the reason it's called an arithmetic logic unit. Right now, it's only an arithmetic unit because it can only do a, it can only do addition and subtraction. But for the easiest possible computer, or for the simplest possible possible computer, this is enough. For the simplest possible computer, addition and subtraction is all you need to do, basically everything you want. So this will be what what I will be using in the 8-bit computer. Now, this is what you see right here is a four bit LAU, so we actually need an 8-bit LAU, so twice that. Now as you can see, I already had tons of problems with that and all the fucking cables. So I'm not going to build the 8-bit LAU on a breadboard, I'm actually going to solder it on an actual actual uh, PCB. And theory, I could actually mill my own PCB on my 3D printer, I could just put a mill in it and do it, but I don't have the tools, <laughs> so I can't, so I will just solder it by hand. Now, that's going to take a while because I actually have to, first I have to plan ahead, right? I actually have to plan where I want to have all the, the wires going and so on and so forth. And I also need to buy some more things to actually start soldering it. But that is actually the first major part of your computer. And I think this is really cool. You already understand how a computer adds to numbers. Right, it is that simple. That is all you need. Right. And remember, this is just an XOR gate and an end gate. So my name is Max. thanks for watching. And to the next time.